Americans travel abroad each year. What percentage travel in our own country? How are hundreds of varied industries involved with travel? Industry on Parade. Peabody Award winner for public service produced on film each week by the National Association of Manufacturers. Three and a half hours out of New York, at Nassau's International Airport, Bill and Marjorie Raffel, a young working couple on a winter vacation, step off a clipper to enjoy a long week of Bahama sunshine. For nine glorious days, they have nothing more serious to worry about than a little intensive window shopping. Exotic sights and sounds, unusual native customs and costumes, all add to the illusion of being far removed from the familiar workaday world back home. Although the Bahamas lie close to American shores, they are foreign soil, a fact that qualifies Bill and Marjorie both with jobs in industry, for inclusion among the more than one million U.S. citizens who travel abroad each year. Foreign travel is no longer the exclusive amusement of the wealthy. The productivity of our industry and its commensurate rewards, as well as the increased speed and economy of transportation, have put trips overseas within the reach of more and more thousands of our citizens. Since 1941, the volume of American vacation travel has doubled. Since 1920, it has increased more than 20 times. Where do Americans go when they leave the Statue of Liberty behind? Almost everywhere. To London and the Houses of Parliament. Paris and the Eiffel Tower. And so far as Egypt with its pyramids and the Sphinx. Across oceans and continents, American travelers fan out to all corners of the globe. But actually, by far, the greatest percentage of their tourism is carried on right here within our own sprawling borders. In trips to places like San Francisco, where the fabled cable cars are kept in active service, not only for nostalgic natives, but also in large part for the benefit of tourists. Like our great national parks, Niagara Falls attracts many hundreds of thousands of visitors every year. And the national capital, with all its historic landmarks, also plays host to great throngs annually. Miami Beach, one of the world famous resorts, can count on seven and a half million guests during its peak winter season. Atlantic City, another important tourist mecca, especially for those who combine business with pleasure by coming here for one of the 400 conventions staged in the city each year. And probably the outstanding tourist attraction in the Western Hemisphere is the island of Manhattan, which every working day absorbs six million commuters and consequently has no trouble making room for a mere 14 million additional visitors each year. Most of the tourists congregate in a few square blocks centering on Radio City here in Midtown. Among the attractions in the area are most of the city's museums, including the Museum of Modern Art, whose paintings and sculpture are no longer regarded as being outrageously avant-garde as they were a generation ago. But New Yorkers are great travelers too especially when chill winter rains begin to fall. Let's see what's involved in preparing for a vacation. For example, the one we saw being enjoyed earlier by Bill and Marjorie Raffel. A smart traveler dumps most of his problems in the laps of industries established for that purpose. Did you ever consider how many industries are involved in helping you enjoy your vacation? First, of course, there's the travel agency business. A good travel agent can arrange as many of the details as you want him to. Book transportation, make reservations, give advice on costs and customs. For the Raffels, this travel agent has turned to other industries that contribute to pleasant, convenient vacations, 
banking for travelers' checks, and insurance for financial protection, to mention just two. Handling all such arrangements for oneself could be more trouble than the vacation is worth. And if the trip is a complicated one, with stopovers in odd spots, arranging it for oneself could be next to impossible. The communications industry has played a role, too, in setting up this vacation. Telegraph and teletype messages have gone out. Reserve space for Bill and Marjorie Raffel. Now as they shop for the vacation, industry enters the picture in an even bigger way. Fishing and sporting gear manufacturers are almost exclusively involved in supplying the needs of vacationers, whose trade also accounts for a good share of the business of department and specialty stores. Cameras? Who travels without one? So that's another industry providing employment to many thousands of persons that might be said to be in the travel business. Today's traveler frequently carries with him a movie as well as a still camera. Indicative of just how important vacationers are to our economy is the fact that travel and directly related products and services now account for nearly $27 billion a year, a sizable percentage of the national income. While Bill shops for a camera, Marjorie looks at luggage. The three key factors here are beauty, ruggedness, and lightness in weight. And our luggage manufacturers have made amazing progress in all three departments in recent years. At luggage plants like that of Schwader Brothers in Denver, every new synthetic textile and plastic developed is put to the test. Researchers here studied for many months the feasibility of using lightweight magnesium in suitcases. The big problem was in applying a permanent finish to the metal, which they solved by covering it with vinyl plastic, warm to the touch and capable of being given a wide range of colors and interesting surfaces. On airline flights, where a passenger is charged for every pound of luggage over a certain amount, a lightweight bag eases the strain on both purse and back. A less well-known contributor to vacation pleasure is the pharmaceutical industry, with its array of vaccines and antitoxins that are absolutely essential when traveling in countries with public health standards lower than our own. In addition to disease-preventing shots like this, the industry produces highly effective medications to make rough passages or long, wearing rides a lot easier to take. By helping Americans to become the best dressed travelers in the world, our garment industry also has a big stake in the travel picture. This particular company, White Stag of Portland, Oregon, has had a long association with travel. It started out many years ago making and repairing sails for clipper ships headed for the Orient. To an old salt, play clothes might be regarded as a come down for a sail maker, but fully as much care goes into such garments as ever went into a suit of sails. A surprising amount of care goes, too, into many of the souvenir novelties on sale wherever tourists tend to gather. Here at Blair Cedar and Novelty Company in the Missouri Ozarks, all sorts of wooden items are manufactured. A hundred different products, all made of fragrant cedar. Voyage baskets of flowers, fruits and confections, another product associated with travel. Here in Bear Creek, Oregon, the firm of Harry and David is one of the companies that have built up a nationwide clientele for their attractive arrangements of the most luscious fruits and nuts available. Map making, how essential that is to the traveler. For no matter by what means of transport he arrives at his destination, maps and charts will certainly be used in getting him there. 
And since about 85% of the traveling done by Americans today is done in automobiles, that means most of the maps turned out by firms like H.M. Gusha Company here in San Jose, California, are road maps. The maps take us farther and farther off the beaten paths. And helping to make our stay out here pleasant are conveniences like the compact trailer, which is really a boat and house trailer combined. The overturned boat serves as a roof for the trailer while on the road. A canvas cover on curved supports will serve the same purpose while in camp. The 135-pound boat rolls off easily. In a pinch, one person alone could get it into the water. Last year, 70 million Americans, almost half the population, took at least one trip. 20 million automobiles, with three passengers each, roam 1,200 miles over a period of 11 days during the average vacation. Buses also carry more passengers than ever before, while streamlined trains, many with transparent dome cars, help the railroads in their bid for a bigger share of the travel business. And as the various transportation systems compete for our vacation dollars, emphasis is placed more and more on speed, comfort, service, and economy. This competition is found also at sea, where aboard luxury liners, like the United States Lines SS America, one finds not only all the comforts of home, but even instantaneous communication with home via radio telephone. A radio operator designated to handle ship-to-ship -ship and ship-to-shore calls completes the circuit to Paris, Boston, or Atlanta about as quickly as it would take to put through a long-distance call back home. Here's your party man, he says, and with the flick of a switch, thousands of intervening miles suddenly disappear. Now, with the coming of the jet airliner, America's age of travel is fully upon us. And no point on Earth is too remote for American tourists, the traveling as people on Earth. American industry, builder of a better tomorrow, has presented Industry on Parade, a service of the National Association of Manufacturers.